On this Info Hub Extended, we will explore a number of major developments which occurred over the past year in the East Burbies Quarantine Region, Region 6. As part of government's push for the development of science, technology, engineering, arts and mathematics in schools nationwide, the Ministry of Education has commissioned three science laboratories in various schools across Region 6. The new labs are the Kanji Secondary, Vrymans Irving and the Burbies Educational Institute were completed at a cost of four to five million dollars. Education Minister, the Honorable Dr. Nicolette Henry, handed over the labs to teachers and students of the respective schools. We trust that these facilities will be able to use to improve the um, classroom environment and certainly the learning of the students and will make um, teaching much more comfortable for teachers. It's part of a large initiative where I usually would go around to see not only um, the commissioning, but to ensure that the standards are being met and the best practices and I know where the gaps are so I can have my technical officers who will come behind me and ensure that they do the enforcement part. According to the school's grade 11 students, the new lab enables them to do more practical work in preparation for their CSEC exams to be held in May, June 2020. The labs are expected to provide an improved quality of education and foster educational development, critical thinking, and hands-on learning. Region 6 residents became beneficiaries of a 5.5 megawatt power station, which was established at Canefield East Burby's Quarantine in March. Minister of Public Infrastructure, the Honorable David Patterson, emphasized the importance of this and many more upgrades as GPL continues to increase its capacity. This plant is the first of three plants that will be commissioned this year, with the I said, this quarter, this half of the year, um, in a week's time, we will be commissioning a plant in Anna Regina in Essequibo, and then shortly after that, we'll be commissioning a plant in Bartica, which is in keeping with our commitment. Minister Patterson indicated that the ministry remains firm in His Excellency President David Granger's vision to transform Guyana into a green state. The ministry in conjunction with GPL, have already embarked on several renewable energy projects. The CEO mentioned them. Um, I just would like to highlight a couple. We will be installing 30 megawatts of solar with storage uh, in the, into the Demerara interconnected grid. We also will be installing 10 megawatts of wind into the grid. Residents of East Burby's Quarantine Region 6 have access to a new Guyana Lands and Surveys Commission sub-office, costing just shy of $30 million. The opening of the new office came at a time when the Commission is making some changes to bring better services to all Guyanese. Delivering remarks at the launch back in March, Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency, then Minister of State Joseph Harmon, said the provision of the service to the region indicates government's commitment to providing quality service to the people of Guyana, irrespective of their location. I will wish to congratulate the Guyana Lands and Service Commission for having this building completed in a very short space of time and for understanding the policy of the government in providing quality service to the people of this country. This is the core principle behind our establishment of tongues because the tongues are meant to be the center of government administration for all of these regions. So you don't have to leave New Amsterdam to go to any other town to get a service which the government is providing. The government is now taking the service to the people. Chairperson of the board of directors at the GLSC, Paulette Henry, expressed satisfaction with the development of the region. This will not only house the staff of the, um, of the Lands and Survey Commission in Burbies, but it also signals the kind of quality of service improvements that we want to offer. And that's what's important. The facility brings the township of New Amsterdam closer to having all government services delivered to residents. Dr. Campbell and his team 
can now provide a higher level of service to the persons within the communities. It means that those families don't have to find transportation to go to New Amsterdam. It means that children and other young family members will not be left alone while mommy or daddy is far away in New Amsterdam and they are left alone here just to be cared for by other family members. It means that the persons who seek this public institution can now do so with an upliftment in their confidence that they're not going to be given a prescription, that little white paper that people fear, and told that you will have to go and get this done privately. Minister of Public Health, the Honorable Walter Lawrence, at the commissioning of the State of the Art Digital Laboratory. The laboratory now generates, stores, and processes data. It also aids in the reduction of referrals to other medical institutions. According to Minister Lawrence, medical professionals at the facility are providing more enhanced services to the residents. Persons can come here and the doctors and the nurses and the technicians can operate with more confidence. You know, to sidetrack, when I came here the last time, I saw a different Dr. Campbell to the one I'm seeing today. And I'm saying that today I'm seeing a positive Dr. Campbell. I'm seeing a more confident Dr. Campbell. I'm seeing a more relaxed Dr. Campbell. And so we must ensure that we provide the measures so that Dr. Campbell can continue to upgrade himself so he can continue to provide higher services to the community of Corriverton. Six brand new internet hotspots were commissioned in the remote village of Oriala back in April by the Ministry of Public Telecommunications. So today we have Minister Hughes with us, Minister of Communication, and she's here to launch the six internet sites that have been established here in Oriella. And that's historic because this never happened before. And so we are extremely happy for this. So we're working towards that. Uh, there's a lot to be done. Unfortunately, these are things that I think as a country we should have been looking at years ago, but we ain't looking back. We're putting things in place now and slowly but surely we'll be able to get more panels into the community. So we are thinking about that. With the village coming online, there is much to be gained in multiple sectors, including security, health, and education. History was created on May 5 when His Excellency David Granger commissioned the Indian Arrival Monument in Palmyra, East Burbies, Quarantine. This Indian immigration monument symbolizes the ties of blood and history between Guyana and India. This monument site is a shrine to Indian immigration and to the migrants' adoption and adaptation to their new homeland. The head of state noted that Arrival Day commemorates the contribution of all the peoples of Ghana. He told the gathering that the nation's foundation was built on their sacrifices and successes. Arrival Day recognizes the nation's diversity. It signifies the creation of a conglomeration of cultures. The nation is multicultural and always will be. And each culture enriches national integration, despite the differences in our people's origins. Persons traveling to the East Burbese quarantine region can without a doubt speak of the six impressively huge 12 feet tall branch statues erected and supported by a solid base at a T-junction located just off the Burbese River's bridge entrance. The exhibit depicts a child, two women and three men performing their daily duties. The region was privileged to have the second sexual offences court opened. The move by the government is in keeping with the Sexual Offences Act, Section 44. The official launching ceremony was held on Tuesday, May 7. At a cost of $13 million, the courtroom was built in three months 
and is housed at the Babies High Court in New Amsterdam. During the launch, Chancellor of the Judiciary, Justice Janet Cummings Edwards, said the United Nations Children's Fund has collaborated with the Justice Department and significantly contributed to the financial support and capacity building. The project, she noted, will ensure that justice is served in a fair and efficient manner. The aim of the Sexual Offences Court is at best to minimize re-victimization of survivors of sexual violence. The Sexual Offences Court seeks to minimize this by providing the facilities that would support victims as they give their evidence. Britain's Deputy High Commissioner Ray Davidson said that the system replicates much of what is being used in the United Kingdom. It will allow survivors to be able to give their side of events in a more conducive environment. It might also encourage others who have suffered abuse to come forward and feel comfortable in knowing that they will be treated with respect and dignity. After over 70 years of waiting, the residents of Plantation Mount Sinai, Angois Avenue in July, became legal owners of their house lots. Scores of residents made their way to the Babies Educational Institute on July 31 as they patiently awaited the delivery of their land titles. After decades of living in the once squatting community, residents are now on the road to development. The more than 200 titles were handed out by Director General of the Ministry of the Presidency, Joseph Harmon, and Minister of Communities with Responsibility for Housing, the Honorable Annette Ferguson. Today, I am very happy that after almost six years of, or seven years of hard work, that we have come to this point where 209 persons will receive their certificates of title. The event was held in keeping with government's vision of ensuring adequate and affordable housing for all Guyanese. Minister Ferguson said the administration will continue on this path until its housing objectives are realized. The president has posited that his vision for housing will see a Guyana, and I want you to listen to me carefully, where every citizen enjoys the right to housing. And His Excellency is merely enforcing what our Constitution, Article 26 of our, of our Constitution, speaks to the issue of adequate housing. Our people must be afforded or with, um, with adequate housing accommodation. Residents were overwhelmed with emotions upon receipt of their titles. I'm so happy today to hold this document in my hand. I was waiting for it a very long time. I nearly get a half of a foot because of this land. And today I am proud, I am happy, and I'm thankful. I want to say thanks to our government and our ministers, our hardworking ministers of Hawaii Avenue. I want to say thanks for getting, um, let us get in our title. Thanks to our president and the hard workers behind this. Thank you, thank you, thank you. The Angois Avenue community has a population of some 7,000 persons with approximately 1,000 house lots. The land title distribution was just the beginning of greater things to come. Other families are expected to be granted their land titles in the near future. This has been InfoHub Extended. Thanks for watching. Goodbye.